we obviously have all got into this habit of thinking that we're more connected because we're on our phones the whole time, we're talking to people, we're conversing with well, strangers a lot of the time. But we can't ignore the fact that part of this is stripping away our humanness. And it's it's been done so incrementally, we've barely noticed, with like a discomfort hanging out with people in real life, perhaps, or a lack of eye contact or eating dinner and you're kind of checking your phone at the same time and all these things that have crept up on us and it's sort of terrifying but you you dissect all of this without it being too scary I feel like you've got a good balance of going it's gonna be okay yeah do you feel optimistic about it there is an optimism running through this book which people have picked up on which I really like because I think there's a lot of books about the doom and gloom there's a lot of books out there about screen time like we know it all we actually know all the information Mm -hmm. now that documentary The Social Dilemma was a big one where we realised the Silicon Valley tech gurus weren't letting their kids use the same technology they'd built and all of that stuff was really scaremongering but I wanted to write a book that was like okay what do we do with that information and what solutions could we bring to ourselves and also the fact that I did want to talk about being human we're not like a static profile picture where we're a personal brand and like everything must be on brand and I've written about that for years and in some ways yes we do have a self on the internet now like a virtual self that I wear a lot of yellow and where I wear glasses and I'm yes I am a little picture but we're also a barrel of contradictions like human beings are so complex We change our minds every single day. We get things wrong. We mess up. We make mistakes. We're not the same person every day. Like, I don't know if you ever say, I don't feel like myself today or I feel like a completely different person today. We're just up and down and ebb and flow. And I think the internet doesn't really allow for that. No, certainly, certainly like the mistake part of that. We're not allowed to have flaws seemingly or trip up and as you know we, like you just said we're human that's inevitable that's all part of us learning and growing but you know we we do get kind of trapped in this weird vortex that we've got to appear perfect we've got to appear always completely empathetic to everyone and everything and understand everyone and everything and know <laughs> everything and it, it's impossible and it's really stressful and i think because it's snuck up so incrementally we we're sort of now maybe assessing it all going oh god how did we get here because you you say in the book um and obviously in your first book control alt delete you know you're born in 1989 so that was the year the world wide web was conceived (laughs) um i'm a bit older than you so i was eight then i don't remember the internet at all at that period i think i started to get a whiff of it maybe in my early teens But it did feel quite innocent then. Like, I remember going to my dad's cousin's house randomly. He was the first person I knew who had the internet. And he was like, look at this. And we went on his computer. And I remember this so clearly. There was a circle with lots of different musical instruments. And if you clicked on the saxophone, it played. Or if you clicked on a drum, it played. And I was like, (laughs) what on earth? Like, I literally couldn't process what I was seeing. And it just seemed expansive, exciting, and really innocent. Can you even pinpoint when it started to go wrong? Or do you think there was always... Do you think the big dogs in Silicon Valley always knew that this had the propensity to get ugly? Mm, That's such a good question. And I think it's like when you work in a job and you have your head down for five years and you look up and go, how long have I been here? I feel like we've just been on our phones, like head down, that we haven't noticed time moving. And it's true, it was really good. There was a time where it, where it was amazing and there's lots of studies in the book. I think it was 2011 was a really good time for the internet where people were reconnecting with old friends like on Friendster and Facebook and kids were doing better at school because of the internet and political change was happening in a good way because of Twitter and we were like, oh my God, this could be amazing. And I think over the last five years, something's changed where it's making us miserable and there are of course still good things and you can still make really good friends and and also I guess it's important to say that the internet isn't like a thing it's not like a sentient being we're the (laughs) things that are using it Mm -mm. so we have got worse we've forgotten that like (laughs) it's not telling us okay yes it's telling us where to go and it's influencing us but actually we are the collective thing that makes the internet what it is so something's gone really wrong I think and yeah, we, we need to take back control. I think that's why I wanted to write this book is 
yes, we are disconnected from each other, but really we're disconnecting from ourselves. The elephant in the room is like, where's our time going? Yeah. Um, and people are, you know, wanting to quit their jobs and change up their life. And people are taking online courses at the moment and, and leaning into spirituality and getting more philosophical. But we're kind of addicted to this thing that pulls us away from who we really are. You know, I know you have spoken about this, but there are some days I wake up in such good mood and I feel really at peace like with who I am and I will see something on the internet and I will spiral into such a dark hole because of one thing I've seen and it it was just like a booby trap (laughs) of like triggers. So I think we've got to just really look after ourselves as well. And also we've created this weird separation. There's like our lives and then there's this life online that exists and sometimes we believe that that's more important. And I'm not just talking about social media. I'm talking about how we imbibe news, how we find out about certain things going on in the world, how we receive information, etc. We sometimes think that that is more potent, necessary and meaningful than our actual existence. And that's propelled us into this other sort of modern day phenomenon that that we definitely didn't fall into this trap, say, 20 years ago, that we feel we've got to constantly be doing is the obvious one, but also knowing. We've got to know all this stuff and and gather all this information. Whereas 20 years ago, when I was 20, I didn't give a toss about any of that. I was just like, where can I have fun? How can I have fun in my actual life? Yes, exactly. And again, it's been very incremental that we're now placing so much more importance on the doing, always being on, connecting with other people. That was just not a thing 20 years ago. Yeah, and I really miss so much of my old life and self. And I suppose my career is very much online and I wanted to acknowledge that so much good has come from it. And I'm very, you know, I've written about the internet for like nearly 10 years now and I was there like at the very start of like blogger culture and I was working in an agency where we paid the first blogger to do a campaign, all that stuff. So it's like I've seen the the growth of the influencer industry and I, I can come at it from like an analytical point of view. But I also found that I was just so lost and really sad and too in that world and realised that... I wanted my friends back. I wanted myself back. I didn't know what music I liked anymore because of like the Spotify algorithms. I didn't know what books I wanted to read because of Amazon. I didn't know what I wanted to wear because I was like getting all these blogger discount codes and I didn't really know who my friend like there was a moment where I was like who are my actual friends? And like my friends from school were like, "Oh yeah, we lost you for a bit there." You got very confused with like lots of different friendships and, and things that weren't necessarily what, what you thought they were. And I was just in this like really lost part of my life. And then I just reconnected with like the things that matter. And I, and it sounds like really cliche, but, but I think I'm of a generation that did get lost in that world for a bit. 